Okay, so today we're going to discuss about new ransomware, which is Cuba, which has already created a lot of buzzword in the industry. And recently Veeam backup also infected with the ransomware of Cuba. So I thought, let me make a one video on that. And thanks for the amazing response you shared on Akira and Conto. That motivate me to make more video on the series and it look interesting. People are more serious about ransomware and uh, I can probably say that this is a kind of a video channel which doing some series on ransomware and their history and origin and it is very good for the SOC professionals and cybersec professionals to understand the ransomware how it works so that they can able to protect the organization from this kind of an attack. Mm. My name is Prab Nair for more information you can refer my LinkedIn profile and uh, if you're new to the channel do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. Okay, so first thing we're talking about Cuba. So Cuba is basically, if you see in Russian, it is called as an incubator. Okay, incubator. Incubator. Okay, which is used about maintaining an environment condition and all that. So when you're talking about Cuba ransomware, it's also called as a cold draw ransomware. Okay, and it is publicly known as a Cuba ransomware, and it was initially flagged as a flagged by the FBI. So in December, the agency basically December 2022, I believe. Okay, they said that hacker group had compromised at least 49 entities in a five critical infrastructure sector, which including the financial, government, healthcare, manufacturing, and information technology industry. And it is also known as a fetal ransomware due to the characteristics marker plays at the beginning of all the encrypted file. It means after the encryption, they basically change the version of the code, which is difficult to track. In this particular slide, I also published the trend micro report. According to 2022, they have targeted larger proportion of the US companies. Then they have targeted the Australia, Canada, France and all that. So the impact of Cuba is huge. Even the recently when I was making a video just six days back, I heard about the news that Cuba also targeted the Veeam ransomware, Veeam backups. So you can see how impactful the Cuba it is. It is developer behind the Cuba ransomware, Russia speaking. So the target exploiting vulnerability initially they have found in a Microsoft Exchange server, including their proxy shell and proxy logon, through which they basically did that. And this is a different from Akira ransomware, which was flagged by Microsoft Defender antivirus in 2017, because in the US ransomware reported to actively target the several organization and they basically expose their sensitive data. So that's something they have considered the factor. Now, if you take an example of the of the ransomware timeline, so in 2021, as I said, FBI has reported, then ransomware was been distributed through the Hanekter malware in 2022. In January 2023, Microsoft stated Cuba ransomware operator were they, they were infiltrated unpatched Microsoft Exchange server. In same May 2023. Uh, ransomware basically uh, the Cuba ransomware took credit for recent cyber attack on Philadelphia in 2021 FBI has reported the tactics and techniques so it, it basically caused significant harm to the organization of business and the best way to get ahead of ransomware attack is to proactive and utilizing the ransomware best practice to protect against the threat that we're going to discuss in in in, in future slide so when you're talking about Cuba Cuba ransomware is a file encrypting ransomware which means it encrypts the file on a victim computer and demand the ransom payment. It is actually play a role of a double exhaustion. Double exhaustion basically mean doing the encryption, asking for ransom, and if you don't give, it basically release the data in the dark web. And uh, people say that it is it, it is a product of a small ta talented group of profit seeking individuals based on Russia. And uh, the best thing about the Cuba is they using a software packaging technique. Software packaging technique mean suppose. This is basically a ransomware virus and it is basically covered by the next next layer of level. So it is difficult for the antivirus or ransomware antivirus tools behavior tool to detect. So because of the extra packaging, it is difficult to detect by the tools. Okay, so that's why it is called a software packaging technique, which is considered as a less sophisticated than a state sponsored malware. So when I say packing, packing refer to the compressed software, 
which required libraries uh, into a single binary executable that is difficult to reverse engineer or detect by the antivirus scanners. That's why every time whenever it target, it change the signatures. Now, when you're talking about Cuba ransomware, they are extensive in their infrastructure. So they use many tools when they want to penetrate. Like they use RDP for remote access, SMB for gaining access. They use PXXE to execute the remote commands. They use Cobalt Strike for the lateral movements. And they also use Mimikatz for their dump credential. Dump credential basically means doing a lateral movement from one system to other system and target the multiple systems. That's why if you find any kind of a Cuba symptoms and all that, immediately disconnect the system from the network because there is a possibility that they can able to hack that system and from there they can have a lateral movement to the internal network. So the key characteristics, they basically spread through a phishing email. They send a phishing email. If the employee click on that, it can create a reverse connection. It redirect the user to the malicious website and through that, the this ransomware can target a system or they convince the user to download this file. It is a useful file for them for their productivity and through that they gain access to the system. So I have used a trend micro reference to explain how the Cuba basically target the systems. Now, if you can see this diagram, you can see here is uh, first it basically scan the vulnerable server. Then they basically use the proxy shell and uh, annectors for the initial access. Then once they have access, they basically gain access and through that they try to gain access to the system and try to do the further access and through the mimicats they have a further access and that is how they basically encrypt the files so if you have some kind of antivirus and all that you can able to detect at this level so ransomware also terminate the active window services they they basically deactivate all the apis and all that so by which it is easy for them to maintain the further access to the systems so as i said they using a Hanictor malware which is basically a loader for deploying a steer like rat and various type of ransomware onto the victim network okay so example like uh, it's like a trojan actually so this is the hacker so he convinced the user to install the Hanictor malware which creating a which open one port and then through that particular port we gain access so Hanictor is basically a malware Hanictor was created in 2014 to drop other malware on an infected machine and it is also known as a uh, what you call total okay and janitor okay so it is called as a total and janitor so this malware is available as a service which make it accessible tool to criminal and contribute to its popularity of this virus so Hanictor sometimes called as a toddle and janitor, which is a loader designed to install other malware into the victim PCs. Okay, so same, same like, you know, I want to gain access system, so I want to install the Trojan. So it is just like a Trojan. So by installing successfully this, I can able to maintain the session. And then the actor behind Hanictor will use a phishing email to exploit the Microsoft Exchange vulnerabilities. They compromise credential and through the RDP, they basically gain access to the system. So question is, what is the algorithm they use by which they encrypt the data? So the first is that they use Salsa and RSA for encryption algorithm. Okay, that is what they did. It used Salsa 20 to encrypt the file and make a so Salsa 20 been back and use AES for encryption and RSA for the key exchange. So RSA is used to encrypt the Salsa key to prevent decryption of the encrypted files. And when it encrypt, it check the file maker for fidel.ca to determine the file is already encrypted. And if it's not, it will prepare the file marker and encrypt the Salsa key again. So that basically make it difficult to hack, difficult to decrypt. And after the encryption, it will remain the file with the extension called .cuba. Okay, so if you find the file extension for .cuba, it means your system was infected with the Cuba ransomware. Okay, and they put a ransom note there. So the tools they use in this attack is on a malware level, they use bug hatch. So what is bug hatch? Bug, bug hatch is actually a custom implant of a C2, which is called command control, which was deployed during a Cuba ransomware campaign in 2022. And uh, it is basically in a memory implant that is loaded by the PowerShell script. And th the PowerShell script basically decode and execute the embedded shell code into the allocated memory space using a window API. Okay, so bug watch basically having a bug hatch is having a capability of downloading executing commands. It give the operator the freedom to execute payloads. Okay, and uh, it is actually dangerous malware because it can use to steal your data, install malwares and other things. So if you think you have been infected with the bug watch, 
the first thing you have to do is you have to disconnect the system from the network because there is a possibility they can use a system to hack a further systems the second thing the cuba use termite 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 it is it is actually again a malware which is used to gain unauthorized access to a computer systems okay so there's a two main type of termite malware available one is called rat okay where the malware give attacker remote control and second is botnet where we can compromise system to do the further attacks okay today we are using this for phishing email so it can be targeted through phishing email or by the malware string okay malware string is basically type of online advertising that is used to deliver malware and it is delivered through the drive by download also and another and another one is basically called as a wet gut again it is a remote tool along with that we have a tools like powershell because if you want to execute anything on remote so with the help of powershell that is possible if you want to gain access of the system you need to have a remote desktop protocol so remote desktop protocol is basically used for that reason along with that we are using a uh, mimicats so mimicats is primarily used for the lateral movement and all that okay so today if you're taking example of dumping shell dumping hash value of the target system through which you need to gain access and all that so for that we use a mimicat so it is a tool which is used to extract the password it is used to extract the hashes and it is used also in a sso sso mean kerberos actually it is a powerful tool which is used by attacker to gain unauthorized access to the system and network okay so so cuba is basically using all three particular tools to control the acts of the target system so more of the story is that if you think you have been infected with the cold draw ransomware the first thing you should do is disconnect your uh, computer from the internet so what is a countermeasure the first is that firewall definitely enable two factor authentication third security awareness because no matter you have a great security solutions and all that you have a great best solution in the market but if employee click on one link it can create a reverse shell access so limit the user privilege to minimum necessary for their role don't give access privilege if any user join as a user operator give the necessary right of the user there's a reason for that now let me give an example so example like we have a system a and it is basically managed by administrator currently so current user who log in into system is not a user it's an administrator so hacker basically convince the user to click on the link when you click on the link it automatically take your existing user privilege so user privilege admin which creating a reverse shell and then hacker through the reverse shell they try to gain access to the system that's why we say if your current user privilege is basically uh, basic user and all that we can reduce the impact then we can also segment your network so we can identify which servers are basically public facing server we can basically keep on the public server side which is basically internal we can keep it in the internal even today we are using a micro segmentations also so in that case if one system is infected with the ransomware it is difficult to replicate to the other systems so by having a micro segmentation of a critical server if you think that server hold the very sensitive data make sure it should be isolated from the other systems or you can basically prioritize a system based on a sensitivity use a security tool like behavior build tool to check the behavior of the systems how it behave and make sure the only solution in the ransomware post attack is backup make sure backup should be taken on a regular basis and make sure the backup should be in a different server and that server should not at all connected with your production systems because in the past we have seen attacker basically target the backup server also and production server also so there is no solution so make sure you should keep the backup in a different network or different locations and that server should be completely isolated from your production network and make sure no one should have a internal access to that backup server directly so this is all from my side do let me know how do you find the series and it definitely motivate me to make more videos on the same channel same pattern so if you find this useful do share in your network also and if you're new to the channel do subscribe to my youtube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos good day bye